crazy couple weeks. Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to respond to your comments on my coronavirus vlog. And by the way, if you're wondering what that is, it's a question mark. Can you tell? My coronavirus vlog is my most popular video on this channel. I've received over 100 comments with over 10,000 views. Although I'm not too sure how they are counting the comments, I think they count my response as well, and I respond to almost every one of your comments. But still, it gives us about 50 comments from you guys. Some of your comments raised some really good questions, and I want to properly answer those questions in this video. So this video is going to be a more informative type of video, which has more facts and some practical tips for you to stay safe from the virus. So make sure to watch until the end for those practical tips. All right, let's begin with our first comment. I'm not going to blur out the names. It's not because I'm lazy. They're public comments anyway. So I'm reading from the computer. Hi, Caroline, thank you for posting this video. By the way, what city are you in? So I am from Chengdu, Sichuan province. Chengdu is how many miles from? It's about 712 miles from Wuhan. So far, Chengdu has 144 confirmed coronavirus patients, and we had three deaths. But fortunately, we haven't had a new confirmed patient since last week. To put this data into perspective, let's look at some numbers from other places. In Wuhan, there are a total of 49,600 confirmed coronavirus patients. In South Korea, there are 5,700 confirmed patients until today. The reason I'm talking about these numbers is because I want to give you a more accurate picture of where I I live. So I live in an apartment building in a secured university campus. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go back to watch my coronavirus vlog. I gave out details on where I live in that video. There has been zero cases of coronavirus on this campus and I barely go outside. So in conclusion, I live in a fairly low risk environment and keep that in mind because I'm going to keep referring back to this throughout this video. I had quite a few people commenting on my dog. Some of you are saying he's adorable. Yes, he is. Thank you. And some of you are asking questions like, do you bathe your dog after the walk? What about the dog walking on the ground? Do you clean him? I heard the dog caught the virus as well. Actually, it's dangerous to bring your dog with you outside. First of all, thank you for your concerns. These are legit concerns that people have and I totally understand it. About a week ago, there was a news in Hong Kong that the owner of the dog caught the coronavirus and they tested the dog and they found virus on the dog. Since then, the dog has been quarantined. So the World Health Organization, WHO, confirmed that the dog is tested to have low level of virus on him. So what most likely happened was the dog may have come in contact with the owner's saliva or droplets that found on the dog's nose. However, the chance of my puppy getting the virus from another human's saliva or droplets and then passing on to me while the virus has to stay active this whole time is fairly low. I would say that it's even lower than the chance of me getting the virus from another person directly through person to person spreading. In theory, there is the possibility my puppy carry the virus and pass on to me. But in reality, the probability is low given that I walk my dog in the game area of my apartment building, aka low risk environment. And most importantly, the dog is not infected in the case of the Hong Kong news. So to officially answer your question, no, I do not bathe him every time I walk him, but I do clean his paws with wet paper towel, regardless of the virus, because I don't want dirt in the house. And my mom would kill me if I don't clean him as the germaphobe she is. <laughs> he doesn't like to be on camera. He's a little shy. Look, they're talking about you. What do you think? Do you have anything to say? No? Okay. All right, let's move on to our next question. Caroline, why aren't you wearing an N95 or N100 mask? goggles and gloves. This is a really good question. So what is the N95 mask? N95 is a kind of mask that works the best to prevent virus to get to your respiratory, respiratory, anyway, to get you through your mouth and throat system. However, there has been a shortage of N95 masks in China. Actually, a shortage of all kinds of masks. Until today, our family haven't been able to purchase one single mask. So how do we get those masks that we use every day? Well, my mom happened to be a doctor, so we had some old stock from before the virus. And the rest of the mask are gifts from coworkers of my parents, friends of my parents, and students of my dad. And we've been surviving on those masks ever since. Let me show you the mask real quick. So this is the surgical mask that you guys saw in my vlog. And this white is the mask we use when we go outside of the campus to get groceries 
This is originally for air pollution purpose. We really only have limited options here. So the question shouldn't be, why aren't you using those masks? But where am I supposed to get those masks? And of course, some similar questions like, coronavirus usually spread through eyes, so wear goggles, when go outside. Virus can get caught on, on it. Virus can get caught on it and into your eyes and mouth. Why don't you wear gloves? Very accusatory question mark. You need to cover your eyes with goggles since the virus can be contacted through your eyes. You should wear goggles when you go outside. outside. Again, thank you guys for the concerns, but does the virus spread through your mouth and your eyes? The short answer is yes, they do. And wearing goggles and gloves definitely reduce the chance of you catching the virus. The virus is spreading through respiratory droplets and salivas when someone coughs and sneezes. And those salivas or droplets can definitely reach your eyes or mouth. So it's definitely a good advice for those who live in areas that has high infection rate to wear goggles and gloves since it dramatically reduces any possibility of contact with another human's saliva. But remember I said earlier that I live in a low risk environment. So for me and my family, wearing a mask is enough to avoid the virus. My dumbass forgot to include this comment while I was filming. So here's voiceover Caroline. This person is basically asking me whether I can get fresh fruits or vegetables while everything is going on. We fortunately are able to get access to fresh fruits and veggies, although we do limit our times to go outside to get those foods. I don't see a lot of shortage on fresh foods. Then again, every different city has a different situation. So for example, if it's in Wuhan, I'm sure the people there will have more difficulty finding fresh foods. So it depends on where you are. I am in a different outfit. It's because this is a different day. I received a new comment when I was editing this video and I think this is a good comment to share with you guys. So this comment has three parts. Number one, mask will never ever prevent you from getting the virus. First of all, never say never. That's a very extreme word. And secondly, of course mask won't protect you from virus 100%. Nothing can not even vaccine. The mask is just to reduce the chance of you getting the virus and it works as an assistant to your health. Number two, unless you have a bad disease, I think disease, or low immune system, nothing happens to you. This is a very interesting point. So I'm glad this person mentioned immune system. And yes, if you have a stronger immune system, you get better at fighting off the virus, not just coronavirus, any kinds, flu, cold, anything. So my takeaway on this point is to boost your immune system by eating healthier and exercise more frequently and reduce anxiety level. Number three, it's just the flu rate name. No, it's not. Coronavirus has a higher mortality rate than the flu. But most importantly, there's something called flu shot. So the core difference between coronavirus and the flu is that there's no vaccine yet. So my point here is take coronavirus seriously, but there's no need to be panicking. <clears throat> We're getting to some juicy part. Let's talk about negative comments. Great piece of human interest propaganda. I would sure that the Chinese government will reward you properly. I would have loved to see a group of expats, blah, blah, blah. Okay, Larry, if that's your real name. For your information, I'm not an expat. I'm a born and raised motherfucking Chinese. So bye, sat Larry. All right, what do we have here? Okay, I'm not even going to read out this comment, but how dare you to have a dog in your avatar? I really hope the loving personality of your dog can balance out your shitty personality. Obviously, these hate comments are not the majority, so Let's share the majority, which are positive comments. So here are your positive comments. You guys are so sweet. Thank you so much for those kind words and blessings from all over the world, the US, Korea, India. Just thank you. I can't say enough thank you to show my appreciation and please stay safe. Good news is the coronavirus situation in China has been winding down. However, the rest of the world is firing up. So to all my friends who are currently in the US, please, please stay safe and be careful and take care of yourself. So speaking of which, I want to give you some practical tips on how to stay safe from the virus. So the first tip, wash your hand, people. Wash it more frequently and at least 20 seconds each time. Make sure to use soap or hand sanitizer that has alcohol level of 65% or above. Hey, stop. So the second tip is do not rub your eyes or chew on your fingernails. Cause that's how the virus and germs get through your mouth and your nose. The third tip is to avoid contact. 
Try to avoid human contact as well as surfaces in public areas or on public transportations. Do not lick the poles on the subway. I know you want to, but in a serious note, if you see anyone coughs or sneezes, stay away. And if you are the one who wants to cough or sneeze, use your elbows to cover yourself or use a napkin to cover your mouth. Tip number four, choose to stay home more often. I know this one's hard, trust me. I've been home for so long, but this tip especially works well for those who are in an area that has high infection rate. That's the best way for you to limit your contact and limit your chance of getting the virus. And last but not least, according to Dr. Mike, stay alert but not anxious. I think I saw that um, in the supermarket of Australia, people are cleaning out toilet paper. Please stay calm and just be aware of the news and what's going on in the world regarding the coronavirus. Listen to your local health authorities. For example, in the US, maybe states or CDC, although there are some controversy with CDC, but you get my point. I will put a link of Dr. Mike's video down below. He made a few videos on coronavirus that has some really good information. And John Oliver made a segment on coronavirus last week. It's really funny. I mean, it's John Oliver. He's one of my favorite comedian, the king of satire, the queen of England. So go watch that video linked down below as well. I want to end today's video using one last comment. It's not going to be over ever. You're just going to get used to it as a constant fear. First of all, it's you are. Second of all, in a way, I think he's right. The constant fear, however, is not necessarily a bad thing. The fear can help us to keep some hygienic habits such as washing your hands. So all these habits will continue to exist after the coronavirus. It's definitely a good thing for everyone. All right, that's all the information I want to share with you today. If you have any question, please leave comments below. I'll try my best to answer those questions. Um, stay positive, stay alert, but not anxious. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Bye. This is a motherfucking crop top, y'all. Look at this, jeez. Mm. Mm. He's the big boy, look at him. He's a big boy. He's a big fairy boy. Hello. Alright, he doesn't like me. Wild.